the morning brothers and sisters this will be a follow-up on that first video i did came out to the car and got some coffee got some coffee and warmed it up I had a few minutes here thought i'd kind of continue up on that little subject i was about i was on to a few things i probably already said them before but i'm gonna say them again now that i'm getting used to my <laughs> to uh, making videos uh and i thought to myself what would be the worst case of a child of grace in the old testament we have Neb nebuchadnezzar he was a child of god if you read there he was a child of grace of course david and, but what could be the what would be the worst uh, rascal you could think of murderer offered his own children to uh, uh, pagan gods all, a sa human sacrifice of his own children every type of evil uh, thing that you can conceive of would be Manassas I think that's in Second Chronicles Manassas brother and sister and when we talk about you know uh, who is uh, and this you know this I got to come out from a monkey thing from a lady that used to be at uh, I used to work with down in Cotton Mill. Black lady. She was a real sweet lady. Real sweet. Definitely a child of grace. But they, she was raised up in in holiness in the holiness uh, religious order. Love her. Loved her to death. <laughs> She'd do anything for you. <laughs> but you can lose your salvation at the drop of a hat. <laughs> at the drop of a hat. Total bondage when it came to uh, uh, her, their religion, you know. She believed in Jesus, so she was one of his. You don't have to have, uh, you don't have to uh, know everything to be a child of grace. You don't, you know, you can be, all, there's all kind of error amongst God's people. But anyway, she she was my, my example for, uh, you know, Losing your salvation at the drop of a hat. I mean, you know, she didn't believe that. I used to tell her that. <laughs> but it, and it came along there one uh, day, the, the cotton mill said, uh, you're not going to be able to wear dresses and be a weaver. She was a, a weaver. Man, she could weave. She'd keep that shuttle and tie-ins, and she knew how to do it. Man, she was the best, the best. <laughs> But the male came along and said, "I, uh, if you uh, said that if you want to, uh, you can't wear a dress out there in the weave shed because some lady got it caught in the loom, you know. And so they said, you got to wear pants. Whew. Well, there it is, brother and sister. Uh, come out from among them. That's not coming out from among them. If You, you should have come out from among them right there because uh, uh, you, you were told uh, that you had to wear pants, you know. Uh, you couldn't you couldn't work out that well she was a uh she was the breadwinner for this great bunch of bunch of youngins and grandchildren she was a big breadwinner for the, for them and uh she had to make a decision <laughs> you know I, I came in one day and there she was she had on pants blue jeans <laughs> so i'm trying to put out here is is uh Plain as I can put it, you know, uh, that it's 100% grace. Here's an example in the Old Testament. <laughs> I was talking about soldiers, of the, you know, the soldiers of the day. Here's an example in the Old Testament. Manassas, murder, everything under the sun, idolatry. And uh, yeah, if you ever read over there, it's like, oh, you know, you don't, they haven't, <laughs> Hollywood hadn't made a movie this, this bad. <laughs> But it's telling you about, you know, what is going on. God is rich in mercy, brother and sister. He does what he wants to do. He saves who he wants to save. Uh, he born again. He gets them born again. Uh, whoever he wants to be born again, he he uh, he brings them to life. Not all of them converted. Remember that? He said, uh, when thou art converted, Peter, strengthen the brother. Even his disciples weren't converted. They didn't have all the truth. At one. They had, you know, God growed them up. They were uh, 
But anyway, I don't want to get off on, on that, but I'm just trying to tell you, uh, God has a people amongst all kinds of different, uh, in this old country boys view down here in Alabama, uh, of all denominations, religions, and everything else, you know, uh, people that you would not even imagine, brother said. That is the glorious gospel uh, that he had mercy on all these people, regardless of their uh, situation in life that they were born into, regardless of it, you know. He knows it all anyway. I think that's why he's trying, what he's showing is graceful. Manasseh, if there was a, a rascal in the world, it was him uh, sacrificing his own children to pagan gods. So uh, that's what I was putting out here today. People can't get it. I'm going to do this thing about Christmas. <laughs> I'm going to get myself in big hot water uh, here pretty soon in a few weeks, I guess, with about Christmas and my view on that. But uh, I don't want to get into that. But uh, some uh, some people can be so picky. Uh, there was one fellow down here at the thing and uh, at the uh, store. <laughs> and he was out in the uh, parking lot and I passed by him, and I said, uh, it was a Christmas time. <laughs> and it was Christmas time, and uh, he uh, said, uh, I, I walked by and said, uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and he says, I don't, I don't celebrate Christmas. That's a pagan holiday. That's straight from the devil. <laughs> I don't celebrate Christmas at all. And, and, and you know, he knew all about what was on the Internet and everything about the uh it's a pagan holiday and everything. So uh, I just said, you know, I just drew back. I said, okay, you know, a good day, you know, have, have a good day, you know. I re I stepped on his toes, but I noticed. I went back in there and I noticed that he was, uh, his job was to put up and on the shelf all kind of Christmas doodads and everything else, you know, Christmas doodads. So I'm saying, they're never consistent, you know. You wind up excluding yourself. The move, the more, the further you move away from grace, the more you exclude your own self. Say, brother, sister, because none of us, uh, we're all born into into some kind of situation, you know. That's, uh, uh, you know, is not coming out from among them, you know, not coming out from among them. Whatever that means, y'all look it up. I don't know what it means. It means something else, is what I say. It means something else. Uh, 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 coming out from among them. I don't know exactly what it's talking about. I'll, I'll admit, I hadn't studied up on it. All I know is it doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't mean uh, if coming out from among them, that'd be a work. You, we're not saved by works. <laughs> that'd be something you do, coming out from among them. So that's not it. It means something else. Uh, there is a coming out from amongst, you know, the world. It's, it, there is. In my heart, there's been one, you know, because it doesn't interest me. You know, the world doesn't interest me like it used to. You know, I know there's nothing out there for anybody. There's nothing out there. Oh, I'm running out of time here, I think. I know there's uh, nothing out there, but uh, just want to put up there, I had this idea about Manassas. Look it up. I think it's Second Chronicles somewhere. And uh, you got Nebuchadnezzar, you've got Saul and uh, David. You've got all these examples of people in high places that were God's people. But I think for the greater majority of God's people are taken from amongst the meek and lowly people of, of the world. But uh, he has people in high places that are, that are, are his. Uh, who what was that? Nicodemus. That's one, that's one that one of his. So uh, anyway, just want to get out here and make this little video while I had it in my head. Uh, there's an example. There's an extreme example of somebody that, that shows you that God does uh, not. Uh, uh, he, he, he chooses who he wants to choose from my, all the way to my Adam, all the way to the very last day, no matter how uh, what rascals they are in this life. Now, look, we don't see behind the veil. We don't see what God does. In his uh, in eternity, we can't see behind that. We don't know what he's doing. You know, those children that he sacrificed—they <laughs> might have been in glory for uh, uh, in the glory land for how, who knows how long. I don't know. In a beautiful place for a long, long time. So we don't know that, brother. 
We don't know what God's doing behind the scenes. All we know is what we see when we look out through these eye gates, <laughs> like we say, these two little slits in our head when we look out into the world. That's all we see. Unless we have eyes to see a little bit further that there is a kingdom that is going on right now in the heavens and Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning over it and is bringing everything to fruition. <laughs> everything is marching toward the very last day, that great day, brothers and sisters, when everything is going to be made right till the former things are passed away, brothers and sisters. Well, there'll be no more death. Death, where is thy sting? That's what I'm looking for, brothers and sisters. There's still a sting to death. Uh, but there is a day coming where there'll be no more sting to death, brothers and sisters. We need not grieve as some, the Bible says. We ought not to grieve as some. God's people ought not to grieve as some, like we have no hope. Uh, people have died in my family, and I've looked, I look down the road, I, what will I do if my wife dies? You know, How will I keep going if she dies? I hope I go first, <laughs> but uh, there, there are, there is a sting to death. But we ought not to grieve as some brothers and sisters as those that don't have any hope. We have bright hope, brothers and sisters. There's a bright hope for the child of grace. Okay? But uh, for those that uh, that don't believe in Jesus Christ, there's not much hope for them. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're not a child of God, brothers and sisters. It just means they're not converted for whatever reason in this world. If you believe not, some people out there must believe not. He says, but God abide is faithful. He cannot deny his own born-again child of grace. Yeah, I'm going to get out of here. I just had a little time. I thought I'd pontificate in my car here and show uh, in case some of my grandkids look in and uh, or somebody out there uh, across the world looks in <laughs> from this little bitty phone right here on our for the most part, except for the beautiful hills and valleys, you know, this flat plain we live on, that God made. And why did he make it that way? Because he liked it that way. <laughs> anyway, peace and love for this old boy down here in Alabama.